point, I would like to th thank Dr. Alim Rustam and his team of technical engineers who have managed to find time from the very busy schedule for this session, live from the labs. Professor Dr. Rustam served as the head of department of astronautical engineering at Istanbul Technical University from 2004 to 13. He is currently the manager of space systems design and test lab. Many nano satellites have been developed since 2006. He is the chair of road technology program. Dr. Azlan's research interests include the design, analysis, development of nanosatellites, manned and unmanned rotorcraft systems with prototypes, computer fluid dynamics, and aerodynamics, and defense and educational technologies. Dr. Azlan has also authored or co-authored over 240 technical publications. Dr. Uh, Alim, thank you so much for being with us. The floor is all yours, sir. Thank you, Faiz. Uh, if you okay, thanks. I think everybody is able to see the presentation. Well, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you once again. Thanks for uh, inviting us to give such a uh, special talk during the World Space Week. I know that Pakistan is particularly in the leadership of in the Institute of Space Technology, uh, spending a, a very good effort and time to contribute to the World Space Week. Uh, I assume Pakistan is one of the top countries to celebrate World Space Week, uh, as far as I remember. And in Istanbul Technical University, uh, we have a good lab. Uh, we are in the satellite technology and, actually, and also the rocket technology development for about 20 years. Uh, first, uh, I will try to summarize the current state of space uh, in the world. And then very briefly, uh, I will give examples of what we are doing. And actually the team in our lab in space system design and test lab, and they will uh, present the work directly from the lab. And if you have any questions to me or to them, please do not hesitate to ask whenever you like you can also write your question to the chat uh, section so we can read and answer so uh, there was a small introduction of me so we have two uh, laboratory one is where we design and test uh, satellites and we have we also a laboratory where we communicate so one of our engineers will also talk about uh, uh, communication. And there is also the University Space Engineering Consortium Global. I am a committee member there and also one of the founders. And I always ask Pakistan also to be a member of this institution. So I am also a corresponding member of International Academy of Astronautics. There is a lot of work, international work going on. I think this is an important institution. And I also represent Turkey in NATO. So this is our university. Uh, we know that at least there is one member uh, following us, Hawaii's. And well, Istanbul is a nice place. You all are very welcome. And our department is available since 1983, but the university is from 1773. It is the third old technical university. So we have a very, very long history. Actually, let's give a break and small video of Istanbul for those who doesn't know Istanbul in a mystical way. So again, you all are very welcome to Istanbul. I've been to Pakistan many times. It's been always a pleasure to be there in person with you. Hope in the coming years, we will repeat that. Well, of course, space technology contributes to all that as well. Okay, so again, just a summary of what space technology is. Well, this is to go to space, to do everything you would like to do there, and preferably to come to back to Earth. 
Well, of course, uh, the systems we place in space, uh, so we make very good use of them. And it's, it's also important to be a space power. Uh, if you want to be, a, say, wealthy, uh, a country with good conditions, because currently, if you do not have space power, this is a big problem. It's, it's really important to increase the amount of people who are dealing with space technology or very high technology. So this it is very important for Turkey and for Pakistan, I would say. We can skip this. So uh, why is space technology is also important? Because all the work done is multidisciplinary. And again, you have to work with many other nations. So at least now we are two nations and it involves innovation. It is directly linked to the very strategic sectors and it has high added value and high quality and high return. So if you can produce for space, it means your products are of very high level. And here you see that 10 kilogram satellite is currently is much more valuable, I would say expensive, much more valuable than one kilogram of gold. Of course, we are trying to reduce that cost, but without further increasing the added Hello. So uh, what is going on in the world? We have communication satellites. We have manned space exploration. We have increased involvement of commercial companies. I don't know if there are any small startups, uh, SMEs, started to work in uh, space technology in Pakistan, but in Turkey, now we have not too many, but we have quite a few started to work and doing business. Well, of course, topic of this presentation is small satellites. Now they become very, very important. And actually most of the space technology being developed worldwide is related to small satellites for a variety of applications of which I will give few examples. Of course, access in space is very critical. And in that respect, reusable launch vehicles is of paramount importance. Then with launching thousands of satellites into low Earth orbit, we have to be careful of space debris. At least we have to be proactive in that field. That's another issue. And what we're expecting by the end of this century, so a living civilization in the solar system. So, and all together, we have to work hard to be part of that, to contribute, and to be a part of that. Since our uh, topic is small satellites, and what is a small satellite? Actually, it is a satellite uh, less than, weighing less than 500 kilogram. And you see that 100 to 500 we call mini satellite. If it is below 100, we call micro satellite. And here, all the figures you see belong to Turkey satellites. And most of them are made in Turkey. Uh, I think except the communication satellites, we also have a ongoing local Turk 6A project going on, a locally developed communication satellite. But all these are locally developed and sent to space. Uh, by Turkish academicians and companies. Well, of course, I should uh, draw your attention to PEMTO, APTO, and ZEPTO satellites. Now, these are also a reality. You see a satellite weighing less than 100 grams. And it's, it's a good uh, way to start to work because it's very, very affordable and you can uh, test certain technologies. And small satellites, I think during the. Let me ask you one question. Which is the first man made uh, small satellite? Which one is it? So here you see all satellite. It's weighing less than 500. OK, who will answer? Turn on Sir, your Sp mic. Sputnik and, and one. Answer. Hmm? Sputnik one. Yes, the very first satellite. It was less than hundred.
kilograms. So it is the the very first satellite is also the very first small satellite. But of course, the concept is different now. The capabilities are different. Uh, as I said, most of the satellites developed today, owing to the non-space technologies, are small satellites. The power of small satellites, because they can be developed in relatively shorter times with relatively modest budgets, that we can have constellations. As, as you see in this video, uh, we have a set of satellites operating at the same time, contributing to a common target, maybe Earth observation. Here, I give different examples. It can be formation, that is, there is coordination. It can be constellation or swarm. Well, of course, sometimes spacecraft needs to come together to operate. And this we call rendezvous and docking. And this is from real life. When you, when you have formation, it has lots of advantages. Constellation is a bit simpler. OK, here you see the mass, cost, and time needed to develop such satellites. Please turn off your mic. And here you see that the power of micro nano satellite in terms of development time and cost. And currently we are going even uh, lower to Pico to Atto satellites. And what you can do with those, actually you can do everything. So I can give you examples uh, of satellites weighing less than 150 kilograms with which and do all sorts of applications, from education, technology demonstration to actual operations. Well, of course, the geocommunication satellites needs to be large because of capacity. And when you have man-made satellites, I am saying uh, not man-made, sorry, manned satellites, that is carrying people, uh, these should be somewhat large, even the deep space satellites currently uh, they are micro satellites most of them and there is also a very good market so because finance and economy is very critical in everything and this this has a very very good market also it's good to work in this field for uh, all of you well of course one of the topics of world space week is that satellites improve life so they help us in communication around the globe. We collect data to use in weather prediction and for other purposes. Well, of course, today with the satellite technology, we are free to travel to anywhere we want without the need to ask someone on the street or around. Well, of course, for communication, sometimes it's also nice to ask just for the fun. but. You, before we have to do that, now it's up to you. When we look at the missions, we talked of communication and Earth observation, navigation is, then we have space observation like the space telescopes, biological, now critical. We have the space stations, meteorology weather, research test, and planetary exploration. So these are the general examples of missions. But again, when we consider space systems, you shouldn't just consider the space segment. Well, it looks nice with the view of space behind. But without the ground segment, space segment is useless. Because if you do not receive the information from the space, then you cannot use it. On the other hand, you also need to transfer the space segment to the space by a launch segment. So it's all critical and the work should be carried out in parallel in all three fields. So this is really important. And every space mission has an architecture composed of very critical elements. And uh, we have launch space and ground, but ground has different elements and space has different elements. Particularly space has the bus and the payload. Payload is the useful thing or why you produce the bus to carry and operate the payload. Well, of course, that's also very critical. Have you received the information from the satellite and, you, and have you controlled the satellite? 
and of course you will you will need people's infrastructures computers and that's the subject here taking uh, different photos of the field and such so in communication satellite phones particularly if you have a very large country with rural areas, it's very hard to use the uh, land lines, then the satellite is the only way actually to communicate, both for all kinds of communication, including internet. Today we know that there are like Starlink and web, one web projects to produce or to provide internet to anywhere in the world and fast and high bandwidth internet. So this is really critical. Then a communication satellite. This is the Turksat 3A. You see it is large, three ton, but today we have satellites five, six, seven tons. And these are the subsystems of a satellite we can discuss later on. That's another view of another communication satellite. Turkey has uh, currently three operational and we are going to have another one to be launched soon and another one in one year and another one in two years. So it's important to have communication. This kind of, uh, we say this exploded view, and this is an important part of satellite design. So you have to carry out such work as well. So this is another, just I will go quickly. And this is, a satellite we have produced for our Turksat communication company. We have done that in two years from two, uh, 2011 to 2013. And it was fully supported by Turksat. That's a very complicated project. We had 100 engineers worked in this from a variety of disciplines. So this uh, helped us a lot to learn how to build, how to operate and how to see many problems that can happen during the development process. And you know, Internet of Things applications, that's very critical. And without the satellite constellations that is using many satellites, it will be very difficult to uh, satisfy that. With the Internet of Things, well, of course, you can control the systems at your home, or you can do smart agriculture, you can have smart cities, you can have autonomous systems with the help of such systems. Another thing is automatic identification systems for the satellites. That's also very critical, particularly in the international seas, because there are many problems. You can have attacks. And as soon as you have a problem, uh, the authorities should know about that so that they can aid you. They can resolve your problems and they can uh, let the ship to carry its uh, travel, its uh, trip uh, safely. So this, this is really critical. We have also such projects. Let's skip this. And weather prediction, uh, today, you know, uh, well, I think the weather prediction depth is as good as two days. So if you receive the information on the weather two days ago, you can make sure that it will happen, but more than two days, this is currently not possible. The errors are very high. And again, now we are having uh, nanosatellite constellations to, imp to improve that, the Lemur constellation, for example. But I mean, even if you know the weather from yesterday, this is something very, very important. Here you see a, a weather satellite. Then, of course, navigation is very critical, as I said. Today, by using your phone, cell phone, without thinking, you say that I can reach my target location. I think this is very, very important, and it's also important to work in such satellites like, like the GPS satellite. Well, of course, there are many other nations uh, which have their own systems on the topic. Then Earth observation is also very critical. And one of the hot topics uh, for many nations for various civilian and military purposes. For example, for uh, we have a project. Now the first satellite will travel to space. Sorry, let me run this video. This is an Earth observation project 
a constellation of eight satellites for disaster monitoring, along with some other applications. So the first satellite is kind of ready and will be launched uh, as soon as the launch company is ready. Now it was delayed because of COVID. Well, of course, for example, in Suparco, I think you have a clean room where satellite technology development is carried out. Well, launching is very, very important. Currently, we don't have a large launch facility in Turkey, but we have such a project. Uh, country is determined to have this technology. And here you see four satellites to be deployed for Earth observation purposes. Now the first satellite is finished in this project. And here you see the uh, how satellite help us and improve life as an example. Well, of course, here you see that you have to support space technology with many other technologies based on information technology. Which, which is critical, then in this case, the artificial intelligence and autonomous systems are also very critical topics to work on. Okay, and well, another example I will give you from Japan, a very affordable and very small satellite with which you can have one meter resolution. I think this photo is very sharp and very high quality. To me, currently, this is the best technology in small satellite. So we are trying to produce such systems also. Well, of course, and we have the ISS, the Mansat, and it has many advantages uh, for the whole world with the research being done there. And uh, some information in my university. So we started the department or space studies in 1986, but we were active actually only after 2000, by 2005, starting the first CubeSat work, I2PSAT1, being launched in 2009 and still operational. It's been kind of 11 years and still you can listen to the beacon. We receive 70 students per year. We have two space labs with this aim many engineers working for industry in Turkey and worldwide. We have engineers almost in all space agents. And this is uh, the curriculum we follow regarding uh, space technology courses. The students in the first year, they immediately design a model satellite, a CANSAT, while they are in the first year. And to finish the department to be an astronautical engineer, they have to produce a very good project work. And I will give you examples of that too. And we have many graduate studies. I also know that there are very good studies in ISD. So here are some uh, examples we can discuss later on. That's a model satellite. You know also that very well. Uh, we also take place in the international competitions. And we also run the national competition. I will give you an example. So in the national competition, actually, we, we develop the methodologies and we produce the rockets and we launch the satellites by Turkish made rockets. This is one of the projects uh, last year students produced to graduate. Here you see a reusable launch vehicle uh, that will take astronauts to the moon and back using the lunar gateway. So in the IAA competition, this team became the third. And this year, uh, the students uh, designed the space uh, stations, lunar base camp, you see. 
for example, also received very good comment from the judges. I think these are very good. And, and you learn a lot about space technology and the space itself and the life in moon. And of course, the target is Mars. This is the team who took the first place. This is a complicated model satellite. And they also first in Absco Kansat in 2016. And I believe you heard the rust 2019. So it will take place in two years uh, next year in Istanbul, hopefully. This is our lab. We also give training tutorials during the rust conference. So, uh, well, hopefully if the COVID allows next year in June, we will have the meeting and you all are very welcome to attend. And we have also UNICEF global meetings. Uh, this summer, it was supposed to take place in Istanbul, but because of COVID, we postponed that to 2022 in two years time. Hopefully in two years time, all the, uh, most of the problems will be resolved and we will all meet in Istanbul, hopefully, inshallah. Then we produce also books as part of International Academy of Astronautics. And this book is for free. You can get it from the internet. If you cannot find it, send me an email. I will email that the book to you. That's also a very good book. And we have also European projects uh, involving SMEs. I think that's also very critical. And here you see a summary of our CubeSat projects. So I will, in five minutes, I will finish. And because I want you to meet our team in the lab and to have information directly from the lab. I think this is important. Here you see five for Turkey. So five of these sites, so all, all CubeSats so far developed are from our lab, from the Space Systems Design and Test Lab of Istanbul Technical University. And we have two more projects going on. This was the first communication CubeSat uh, which is launched in China, uh, from China. For example, this was our chief engineer, but now he's the chief engineer in Netherlands. So he is working for industry and such. He is also working in space project in Finland and such. Here you see two of our satellites. This was launched from Japan with an international project. And this was part of QB50, two satellites. And you see our all facilities. This is all in, in Istanbul Technical University campus. So if you, you are very welcome to come and visit. This is our ground station infrastructure. This is UHF, VHF. This is s expand And this is the uh, avionics. Then we had a project with the Japan. And now it is completing its lifetime. It will deorbit soon. But let me show you a small video. And the Boach is in the lab. So he was the chief engineer for this project. You can also ask him, and you will see him in the video. You see the satellite here. We also send our flag and logo of our lab to space. Here you watch placing the satellite in the pot with the JAXA engineers. That's the launch from USA with Atlas V. So you see many nations cooperating for the same target. So it traveled the SpaceX Dragon to ISS. Then the Japanese astronaut received our satellite along with two other. So here you see our satellite. This was our fifth satellite. Fifth CubeSat.
Okay. Okay, let me keep on. So now we are doing a satellite for United Arab Emirates uh, for the University of Sharjah, a very good, very complicated project. Here you see the details, and I would let Boac talk about that because uh, we've been there giving trainings, helping building the lab. We have built that ground station for them. And this is a project for a Turkish company, Aselsat. Yesterday we did the vibration test and in two weeks we will send it to space. Here you see thermal vacuum test, etc. So that's that's the final form. And another project with 6U with the SDM company. And this I shown, we also work on uh, space mining. We have a group for that. We give trainings on model satellite and CubeSats in many places, both in Turkey and worldwide. Here you see a title. Here you see where we have given CubeSat courses. And we've been consulting Lebanese government also to start their space projects. And we've been there for something like six months, given all kinds of trainings and also having someone from some time to time. We have also built a ground station for them. And in while we have the, that training satellite, training CubeSat, but this is a bit different because you can actually write the actual software for an actual satellite with this training kit. That's why it is critical. We also help high schools with their uh, CANSAT competitions. We give training and we use drones or rockets to, dr to deploy the satellites. So we also, uh, now we have an ongoing competition among the high schools. So they've been also very good building model satellites here. And we have an international uh, competition, Technofest. In the Technofest, we have run the model satellite contest. And here, all the rockets you will see, they are made by us. These rockets and these are competing model satellites. So this locks are in Turkey and the rockets are Turkish made. And we made a world record. We had 23 successful launches in one day. And here payload recovery, payload and rocket recovery. So thank you. Now I will go to the team. Let me stop this. I will start with Boac. Actually, let me first introduce Boac. He is our chief engineer of the lab. Now he's in our clean room. Then we have Egeman. He is thermal structural engineer. We have owner, uh, owner. He is our design engineer. We have Esther. Where are you, Esther? He is our software and ground station engineer. We have another Emirjan, but I think he has a lecture today. So uh, starting from Boac, then after Boac, we can go to SR. From after SR, we go to Honor and Egeman. So he will, uh, they will uh, tell us what they are doing, uh, where they actually work. Okay, Boac, please also introduce yourself. Hi, hello, I'm Boac. Uh, I'm the chef, in, chef engineer in uh, space uh, lab in, uh, our university here. Uh, we are making CubeSat. I'm a, a PhD student in the university also. I'm making in this laboratory for about five years. But he also has his company, huh? Yes, I have a company, a, a fresh company, let's say. Uh, we are developing CubeSats in this laboratory. Uh, we have five clown CubeSats and two ongoing projects here. Uh, so what is a CubeSat? CubeSat is a 10 centimeter cubic satellite. So this is a standard uh, 
uh, limitation with the volume. But so if, you, if you switch to speaker view, so you, you can you can see better. Switch to speaker view. Okay, everybody. Okay. This is a cube set. So this is 10 centim a 10 centim cube. This is our volume limited, but if you want to send something bigger, so you could add more cubes to the to this. Professor Aslan showed one satellites with these dimensions. So you can increase the cubes and say let's three you three unit cube set. Uh, we're making a three cube set here is in the development phase. Here you can see it. This is Sharjah sat. Uh, Professor Aslan already told about it. So this is in the development phase. We are working with software. You can see some uh, electronic boards here. They are all are some subsystems to support the satellites, like a power system to produce power, uh, like a communication system to send the collected data to ground station. Uh, like the, stru the structure is there. Hmm? Also, yes, yeah, structure is here, but it's disassembled. Uh, I don't know here. The yeah. black, the black parts. Uh, are the structure it's uh, what else we we, we will have a, a attitude determination and control system to rotate the satellite in the space to take a picture you need to know the uh, orientation of the satellites for example to take a picture of some specific location you need to rotate it through there so you need a control system in your satellite like this we have some subsystems now we are integrating all of them and making functional tests of these. After that, uh, we have a uh, thermal vacuum chamber here. Here you can see it. With this thermal vacuum chamber, we, we try our satellites uh, if they can work in space environment. So this chamber creates vacuum inside so minimum pressure, and then you can uh, control the temperature in the room to simulate the space environment. While you are in or your satellite is in orbit, uh, sometimes it gets into eclipse, so no direct sunlight, and at some time uh, it gets direct sunlight. So uh, your satellites gets heated and then gets cold. So you need to. Uh, simulate these behavior with uh, a thermal vacuum chamber here. After you pass these tests, after you approve that your satellite can work in space with these conditions, then uh, you test your satellite uh, if it can handle the rocket vibration. So uh, we don't have a vibration table here. We, we have it in university. So I have a video for vibration from the last uh, uh, vibration test. Can I share my screen? Yes. Go to share screen. Okay. okay. So here you see me there. This was from yesterday. Yeah. You can see it. This is the satellite that will be flown, uh, Dr. Aslan said, after two weeks. So after the vibration test, it means you, you check your natural frequency to check if something moved in your satellite or not. And if your satellite is compact enough to continue its uh, normal functions, then uh, it means you can go to space. So you uh, talk with a launcher and go to space. So this is the uh, development phase and from the uh, from the development phase to space. Uh, this this uh, uh, I don't know what can I say. I mean a clean now. It's also important. You need to make your satellites in this clean environment. Why it's clean? So you need to protect your satellite from dust. Uh, some maybe mean, uh, metallic parts that you cannot see directly with your eyes and the, from humidity. Humidity also can damage your uh, electronic parts. 
Uh, I think that's all from me, if you have questions. Okay, and there are also many equipment which is used during the testing and development anyway. So then we can pass to SR. Yeah, I, I, can, I can show the, these equipment. Okay, please, yes. We are using. Here we have a radio here to check the uh, data we get from the satellite. Uh, we have a power supply. We are feeding power not from directly battery in the development phase. We are giving uh, direct power from this power supply. And we have a spectrum analyzer here to check if we can get signal or not, or check some uh, electronic system that if it works or not, it can, it can send signal or not. Such systems we have, I think, uh, as I can continue from now. Okay. Then, uh, SR, you can share your screen by closing watch screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hi, okay. everyone. Uh, I am a software and communication engineer uh, responsible with operating the ground station and writing software for the CubeSats. And I want to give a brief information about the ground station. So it's the ground segment is an essential part of the satellite system. Uh, with a ground station, we can communicate with satellites in orbits. And essentially, we can send telecommands, which is called uplink, and receive telemetry data, which is called downlink. So in uplink, we have to modulate the data using various digital modulations, such as AFSK or GMSK. In downlink, we demodulate, demodulate the signal to turn it into meaningful data. So for this process, we use antennas, amplifiers, radios, and various different software that interact with each other. Here you see a simple block diagram of a ground station system. So we have a receiver in the left side. Uh, we use uh, software defined radio called LIMSTR for this process. And you can see it goes through uh, synchronizing and then the modulation progress process to uh, show the data in a meaningful format that we can understand. Uh, for opting, it's the same, only we encode the data using a, another modulation and then uh, send it to the uh, space using a radio and an antenna. So, here I have a model CubeSat. Uh, that the professor talked about. It's an uh, educational uh, model CubeSat that's been used for education purposes. Uh, here we uh, that. SR, if you stop sharing your screen, we can see you larger. Okay. Okay, now you can show the education satellite. Okay. okay uh, this is essentially a complete CubeSat system. It's only just not space grade, but it has all of the uh, essential subsystems. You can see the communication system, uh, the antenna, uh, the reaction wheel, uh, it's the attitude determination and control system. We have an onboard computer, an electronic power system, and a payload, which is made of a camera and some various sensors. Uh, it essentially does whatever a CubeSat does. And I will show you. Show, show the ground station. Yeah. This is our ground station. So uh, it's a receiver the lighting to this, one, this part and uh, antenna it's connected to my uh, computer with a USB cable. Uh, it's a very simple system uh, because it, it does not need much power since the uh, EduSat is not in space so we can do a close communication with only this uh, with a simple system like this. I'll show a quick demonstration. Here you see the software I wrote uh, for but uh, it's a very simple program being used to communicate with the satellite. So here I turn on the satellite and I can do various things here. For example, I can get telemetry data. Uh, it sends a request to the satellite and the onboard computer processes the request, assembles the data and sends back all of the information. For example, the accelerometer uh, data, periscope, magnetometer, uh, any sensor it has on it, uh, voltage and current values, uh, light intensity, etc. etc. You can see the has of each subsystem here. Uh, it's all of the subsystems are working. You can save these to a file, you can update it. 
in the comment and you can see the values here change. Uh, other than this weekend, set the buzzer, uh, it's a simulation of a beacon light. We can rotate the rotation wheel to at any speed we want. Uh, we can uh, reset the satellite software. We can open the antennas by burning the resistance here. Uh, as you can see, it will essentially just open this antenna, uh, deploy it. And we can get fo uh, photos using a simple command. So satellite will take a photo using the payload. It will send us uh, the resulting photo. As you uh, can it's, see. it's taking a photo? OK. Yeah, but the cover is closed, so it's black. <laughs> ah, OK. <laughs> so you can take one without with cover open. Yeah, sure. So the satellite does basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. The yes. real satellite. For example, the one that will go to space in two weeks, it's doing the same thing. It has a camera taking photo and down linking to the ground station. But when, when the, it's a complicated photo, it, it's taken much time. Yep. I accidentally to, uh, turned off the satellite, so <laughs> it got stuck. Start this one. Sorry. Oh, no problem. It's mm -hmm. we know that it's a function. It's not a problem. Yep. Okay. And that's all from me. Okay. Now let's go to Honor. Honor uh, makes design and drawings of our satellites. Please, Honor. Uh, hi. hi, I'm Honor. Uh, I'm a master student at the IT University in aerospace and aeronautics engineering and. I'm the design engineer for our lab. Uh, so I will show the drawings of uh, the charge asset and talk about the design process and how everything is designed, basically. So the design is an iterative process. So you start with the basics of the satellite. I mean, the first design is kind of looks like a satellite and then you go from there adding the details and whatnot and we work on a computer environment to save a lot of time and well money on the design processes because you can see what can go there what can be designed how and how to save space and all that in the computer so you don't waste your time you don't waste much time with the real parts because you can see what can be a problem, what can, what could not be a problem, where you can place something. And with that, you start with a basic design and you then add details and details. And then uh, there are some, uh, some analysis done on the satellite to see if what has been designed could uh, carry out the mission, could uh, take the load, could take the heat and all that. So after that, you manufacture the parts and then check again and then test them. So then uh, you will hopefully have a working satellite without too many errors or without too many trials and errors. Uh, and the other thing is, so what happens is you have a limited space in a satellite because well, you want to keep it small, so it will be a cheaper. And with that limited space, you have your payloads that will take some space, which is sometimes uh, specified by the payload provider or specified by our internal team. And sometimes you have to give them a space to work with. So uh, sometimes there is a kind of competition for spacing and with, uh, with considering all other factors like how many uh, solar cells you can fit in which uh, what what is wanted you try to find the balance and also when something is designed for example this is a part of a payload which is called IXRD 
it's an x-ray detector that requires a tungsten piece it as it's highlighted there these small pieces are around 500 grams uh, 453 grams if i remember correctly when manufactured and this is a heavy piece for this small thing and you have to anchor it very uh, very rigidly very yeah you have to anchor it very well so it won't ever get loose and destroy the whole satellite so for example for this thing you design the holders and then you get them uh what is uh, get them analyzed by Egeman to see what they can take or what they can't so basically the design process is something like that i hope i explained it uh, okay Oler. thank thanks okay. We, yeah. we have uh, we are short of time let's yeah. uh, go to Egeman okay. to so that he explains a little bit the thermal and structural analysis Th thanks thanks again but well, there is a lot to say in the design but yeah. another time basically we design something then Egeman looks at it and says if it can survive or not then we design again something like that okay okay Egeman please go ahead yeah, my name is Ayaman. Hello, everyone. And I'm a physicist. I work full time at the Space Laboratory and also a grad student on Defense Technologies. Um, my responsibility in the lab is to thermally and structurally analyze the designs that my colleague on Earth creates and see that if they survive the launch and the thermal environment. Um, as Honor mentioned, uh, we design our satellites in digital environment, CAD design, and we need to sure that they work before we actually manufacture them because if you manufacture them without analyzing and if you discover a problem it will be a very costly mistake so we need to be sure that they work and they uh, function properly in space uh, during launch the satellites may be subject to 9 to 18 g's and in space they will be subject to, to very enormous thermal thermal stresses because an orbit approximately takes 90 minutes and 45 minutes of this orbit takes in sunlight and other 45 is in shade. And during this time, they will be heated up and cooled down very rapidly. And we need to be sure that they survive this thermal loss. And I use various softwares for my analysis and I can show you a little bit of pieces from my analysis. If I can share my screen here. So I'm not sure if you can see it. Yes. It's okay. This again. is the terminal analysis of the charger set that we talked about. And this is the design, the 3D design that Onur made. And I implemented in this software and terminal analyze it. You can see that the colors of the sides are changing because their temperature is changing. You can see the solar panels and the set structure and the GPS and And in the next animation, you can see that the satellite is rotating for the IXRD operations and temperature is also changing depending on the maneuver. And we need to be sure that the all systems, uh, all components of the system stay within the operating range. And uh, so, yeah, this is my job here in this laboratory. Okay, thank you again, man. He also does structural analysis to make sure that the structure design raises the uh, launch loads. Okay, so it is midday. Uh, well, thank you very much for listening to us. If you have questions, we can uh, receive a few of them. Unfortunately, we don't have too much time. At least uh, I have to go back to the meeting. Okay, uh, please, if you have questions, do let us know. Or uh, we, you can also have our emails from FAIS. And you can also directly write to us if you have any question. Do not hesitate. You can ask us anything related to the field and based for our experiences and whatever you would like to ask again uh, in the field. You are very welcome. So I think uh, uh, we can stop. Uh, Faiz. Uh, yes, sir, definitely. Uh, we have already taken you far from the meeting. Uh, we are very thankful to you, sir. Uh, we cannot express our gratitude enough for you and your team. Uh, you guys gave excellent, excellent presentations, and uh, I'm very sure of it that the students were fascinated by SF, uh, which they are not otherwise able to see firsthand. So once again, I'm very thankful to you and your team.
for granting us this opportunity. Well, it was a pleasure and it's, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you and very much. Particularly, well, in person in Pakistan and all are very welcome to Istanbul. Definitely, sir. We'll, we, we hope to visit Istanbul soon. Well, not with Arduino, but Well, if they make the Arduino much stronger, it can be, but then Arduino is Arduino is Arduino because it's very affordable, very cheap. So it serves its purpose. For the satellite, again, you have affordable things, a bit more expensive, but they will do the job. And again, if you can work with Arduino, you can work with satellite computer too. You can do much more, basically, as the difference. Ah, uh, well, Starlink space debris, I think, well, think of daily traffic. So we will have similar problems, but this, this is life and Starlink is a very, very useful system. And I, I think they started to see the benefits, particularly in forest fires in USA, because they can receive information very quickly and they can communicate with the people in the field who are trying to put the fire out. And this is very, very critical. And in rural fields, communication is a great problem. Now with systems like Starlink, you can start communication in a few minutes rather than hours, as is the case now. So they are very useful and there will be problems, but now in a good field to study also space traffic management. So with good space traffic management, they should be okay. I don't think it, they will hinder astronomical observations. People, I think they will be careful with that. I think that's it for the questions. Uh, I'll be sure to give the students your email, sir. So if you could find Please, answer, yes, you can give you can give uh, everybody my email, Boach's email, etc. No problem. We will be pleased to try to answer if we can their questions. Definitely, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, I need to leave. Bye bye. Okay, sir.